going to be performing a tracheostomy care on this patient. Um, before coming into the room, I have reviewed my doctor's orders. Um, I have come into the room, verified that I do in fact have the correct patient, and that I am performing the correct procedure, so I'll do my two patient identifiers. Um, I'll introduce myself to the patient um, after I've already collected all of my supplies for the treatment that I'm going to administer. Um, I will have wanted to provide it for patient privacy um, and introduce myself to the patient. At this time, I'm going to want to get a baseline set of vitals on the patient, um, assess um, any respiratory distress, listen to the patient's lung sounds, also take the lung sounds, um, and any presence of crepitus. Um, I've already prepped my patient for purposes of the video. Um, I've removed the pillow from the back of the patient's head and I've placed a rolled up um, towel that's going to give me, um, it's going to kind of open up the trach for me, just make it easier for me to perform my treatment. And I've just draped a towel over the patient. Um, this is just to keep the patient clean as possible. I've also connected a pulse oximeter to the patient. This is going to allow me to continuously monitor their um, oxygen saturation during the treatment. Um, and I've also brought in um, goggles. Um, this is part of my PPE. Um, sometimes there can be some, uh, some fluid and, and secretions that may come up during the treatment, so we want to avoid that from happening at all possible. Um, because I'm already in the patient's room and everything's prepped, I've also brought with myself um, just extras in case I need it. Um, I have an extra cannula. Um, an extra fenestrated drape and an extra set of um, steel gloves. Um, this is just precautionary in case I do need the procedure. And what that's basically going to do is allow me to avoid in and outs of the room. Um, it's just going to be a faster process from there. So I've assessed the patient's pain level, explained everything to them, and now I'm going to set up my, um, my trach kit. I have a um, sterile kit here. Inside this kit, there is a drape here. It's a sterile drape. This is what I'm going to use to maintain my sterile field. And I can touch just a little bit around this to make sure that it is properly on my um, table. Um, I will then just dump my supplies out. And I try to move around my sterile field versus going over my sterile field. Um, for the purposes of this video and um, for to maintain sterility, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have pre-opened um, hydrogen peroxide as well as normal saline. I'm going to do a half and half mixture of hydrogen peroxide and normal saline and this will be used to soak my um, inner cannula and I'm going to do some normal saline um, in this tray over here. Next, I'm going to put on sterile gloves. These were in my kit. sure that I maintain sterility of my gloves. Next what I'm going to do is separate out my supplies. I have some cotton pads here. This is going to be used to clean around the stoma. I also have my fenestrated drape, a little pipette, and tweezers. I like to leave one of these out. This, is, this will be used in case I have some difficult to remove secretions, which I would then soak with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and I would use one of my um, normal saline um, gauze to kind of rinse it um, if I were to run into that situation. So this time, I'm going to put all of my cleaning supplies into the saline mixture. I'm now going to identify my sterile hand and my clean hand, okay? My sterile hand, I will remove my cotton and my cleaning supplies out of the normal saline. I'm going to make sure that the patient's oxygen saturation is stable and I will with my clean hand 
remove the inner cannula. Ooh, this is this is dirty. I'm going to drop it into my half and half solution, replacing the oxygen mask. While that is soaking, I will then remove it again, only touching the white outer part of this. And I'm going to use the pipette to clean the secretions out of the cannula. I will then drop that, and that goes into my um, it's go in the garbage, and that goes into my normal saline mixture. While I'm cleaning that, I'm taking note of the tenacity, the color, the consistency of the secretions that are coming up in, in that cannula. With my sterile hand, I'm going to remove it out of my normal saline, kind of rinse, shake it off a little bit, and then I will replace back in. want to make sure that that is securely in there so I kind of pull back a little bit on it and make sure that it has connected. At this point I'm going to be performing a clean procedure. My hands are no longer sterile. So what I want to do is remove the fenestrated drape and I will take note of the color, consistency, odor of, and amount of the secretions. This is something I'm going to want to document when I do my um, charting on this procedure. Um, of course, I don't want to show it to the patient. It's gross. So I will toss that. Um, and then I'm going to um, use my Q-tips to gently, in a rolling fashion, clean around um, the stoma. And I'm going to take this opportunity um, not only to clean, but also to observe the condition of the stoma. I want to make sure that there's no skin breakdown or signs of irritation or infection. And again, I'm going to use a rolling matter with the Q-tip, um, only you know, not overusing it, basically. I'm going to toss that. Because I don't want to irritate the skin that's already got this trach on it. So um, then I'm going to use my cotton pads to clean around the area. Again, one pad, um, I don't want to overuse my pad and smear bacteria around, I'm going to toss that. And again, this whole time, I'm just using this opportunity as a utilitarian experience to make sure that I can clean the area, but also as an opportunity to observe the site. Um, everything looks good. Like I said, if I had some difficult to remove secretions, I would use hydrogen peroxide on this pad and then rinse with a normal saline pad. We don't want to leave hydrogen peroxide on the skin. It can continue to degrade the cells there. Um, so then I will replace the fenestrated drape around the stoma. And I'm just trying to take caution and take care here to try to do as little manipulation of the actual trach itself because um, that can cause some irritation to the patient um, as it's moving in their, in their throat. So I'm using tweezers that, was, that were provided in my kit. assess the neck strap, make sure that I can fit two fingers in there, make sure that there's no irritation or breakdown as well. So I use it as an opportunity to perform the task as well as assess the patient during that time. So I have now um, successfully cleaned and replaced the um, inner cannula of this patient's trach. Oxygen saturation is fine. I'm going to again make note of any respiratory um, distress. I'm going to listen to the lung sounds. Um, make sure that the patient is feeling okay and has tolerated the procedure um, all right. They don't have any questions. Um, I um, want to make sure in my documentation 
that I document the patient's tolerance, um, if any pain meds were necessary before the procedure or post-procedure. Um, I want to make sure that I document the condition of the stoma, the color, amount, consistency, and any odor that might be coming from the um, drainage on the fenestrated drape um, uh, pad, as well as um, the amount, consistency, tenacity, and the color of the secretions that were actually in the cannula. Um, I will document the patient's oxygen saturation as well and that it was monitored during the treatment. Essentially, I want to make sure that I've documented everything that I've done in the treatment um, just so that when the next nurse comes on, they know um, the task that was performed. Um, once that's done, I will want to ensure that the bed rails are up, that the bed is in the lowest position, and that the patient's call light is within reach. Um, oh, that's as low as it goes. Um, and um, ensure, again, just check patient comfort. Collected my supplies, thrown out what I can. Um, because I've already brought in some extra supplies, I'll probably need to be leaving these in the room. It's per, pay, per agency protocol. Some agencies don't want you taking items in and out of the room. So this may be something that will keep in the room um, for kind of emergency purposes. Um, and that, we're good.